So this is the Acer Swift X. And when Acer announced this, I got very excited because I feel like this is a laptop that a lot of students are going to be gravitating towards. Not only do you get like the traditional ultrabook or slim laptop that you carry to school, the kicker is you get a dedicated GPU. The price point is very reasonable for what you get. And if you've ever used an Acer Swift 3, you're gonna be very familiar on how this laptop feels too. There's a few different colors you can choose from. I got the gold edition. It's, it's okay, you know, it's not like a, a deep, dark gold. It's very muted. But the one thing I don't like that they did was they didn't keep the golden casing around the entire laptop. They, they made the bottom silver and then they kept the top lid gold, which is okay, but it feels unfinished. If you're a maniac and you care about your laptop being opened with one hand, you can do it. You just gotta go very slowly. If you go too fast, the bottom is going to lift up too, then you gotta use your second hand to push it down. There's tons of IO, you know, like on the left hand side, you have your power connector, your USB type C port, full size HDMI, USB, and then on your right hand side, you have a lock, another USB port, and then of course, your headphone jack. This is a light laptop, it's about three pounds, so it's not gonna feel heavy in your bag. And when you open it up, the bottom portion of the laptop lifts up to provide a, a better cooling situation. Now this display is 14 inches, it's IPS, it's 1920 by 1080, so it's 16 by nine. So you're not gonna get that 16 by 10 that I personally prefer for productivity. But again, the price is, is reasonable. So I'm gonna let them off the hook on this one. The screen is okay, you know, like it's color accurate enough that you can obviously do content creation on this, but the brightness is a little on the lower side. Like it's just over 300 nits, but it is matte. So depending on how you use your laptop, if you're sitting in a room with lots of reflection, this screen is gonna do a great job of reducing that. There's a webcam on top, it's 720p, and of course it just looks like the rest of 720p cameras that are out there on the market. Now this keyboard is very easy to type on. It is a bit squishy with a little bit of keyboard flex in the middle. The keys are not super clicky, but they're not the most mushiest keys I've used, but they're definitely on the softer side. Of course, you get that backlighting. The only thing I really don't like is the placement of the page up and page down keys. Like, why are they squished in with the arrow keys? Because the arrow keys are very thin as it is, and placing a page up key above it makes it kind of difficult to press. You do have a fingerprint scanner if you want to use Windows Hello to log in, and you have a touchpad. Now this touchpad is not glass. Acer is calling it Maillard, which is basically another word for plastic. I'm not gonna go crazy over the sticker placement, but I'm just gonna say this quickly. This is some of the worst sticker placement I've seen today. Okay, like, come on, let's wake up sticker guy. Like, have some pride in what you do. Your kids, your kids are looking up to you, okay? You don't want them to feel like their dad is the worst sticker guy in the business. They're gonna grow up one day and they're gonna be the kid of that dad who didn't place the stickers properly. Okay, the speakers on this laptop are on the bottom. There's two of them. They're, they're not great at all. There's like no depth to them whatsoever. Definitely like the bottom of the barrel for PC speakers, but I get why they're not that great. You know, like Acer is focusing on the performance and they wanna give you value for the performance. Like think about it. There's a Ryzen 7, you're getting a full size RTX 3050 Ti. The same wattage of the 3050 Ti that's inside the Dell XPS 15. And when you pair that with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 14 inch display, and of course 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD, the price looks very, very reasonable. And when you're thinking about synthetics and you're, and you're running that Cinebench R23 test, the multi-core performance on this actually beats out the Dell XPS 15. And the single core performance does a good job too. It's just when you start doing more intensive tasks, that's where things start to change. Like if you're buying this just for Photoshop, the performance is awesome. Like very close to like the high-end H-series processors that are out there. But if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, that's where things start to change. You know, even though this has a 3050 Ti, the Dell XPS 15 obviously outperforms it because of that beefier H-series CPU. And then you got Intel QuickSync, which is also playing a big factor. But if you're a developer, the performance is great. You know, you've, you've seen the, the results on these Ryzen processors, they're great, you know? And it was able to quickly chew through a Mozilla compile or Mozilla Firefox compile test very quickly. And obviously you can game on it. Are you gonna be crushing the latest titles at ultra or high settings? No, 
You're gonna have to drop down the settings to about medium if you wanna play most games comfortably, but it can do it. The fan noise is also very low as this is a very conservative laptop in terms of what it can do with its thermals. Like the CPU never really gets that hot. And if it does, it, it reduces the clock speeds in order to compensate. And even on performance mode, the fan noise only gets up to about 47 decibels if your head is against the laptop. But if you're on a sitting position like you normally would, it gets to about 44 decibels, which is more than reasonable. Now taking a quick look at the inside, a lot of you are probably thinking that the left-hand side has a little bit of wasted space. They could have made the battery bigger. And if this had poor battery, I would agree with you, but this 57 watt hour battery inside of here nets you 10 hours of use before needing to charge, which is great. The other thing is you get two storage slots. One is obviously populated with that 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, but if you want to expand in the future, there's a second one right here. There's a swappable Wi-Fi card, but the memory is soldered onto the motherboard. So whatever spec you get, that's what you're stuck with and you can't upgrade the RAM. The only thing I don't understand, and this could be because of engineering or costs in order to keep the price lower, is why they didn't go with the second fan. I feel like if they had that second fan there, they probably would have been able to cool this laptop even better. Honestly, for the price, this thing is very reasonable. You know, you're getting an eight core processor that's great for programmers. You're getting that RTX 3050 Ti that helps designers and creators or anyone that just needs actual GPU performance. If you don't need a GPU at all, then the MacBook Air starts it's looking a bit more attractive because it is retailing for the exact same price and you are getting better speakers, a better display and a few other things. But if you need that GPU and you wanna be on Windows, like this thing, is a great deal. There's a link to this on Amazon in the description down below if you're interested in checking it out. If you have any questions, let me know. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.